so off we go. Now I'm going to start with a little round brush and I'll turn this because you've got your own picky there haven't you? So you, you, you yeah, grab, grab oh yes, of course Because I'm going to need to work across this so... Um, so we start with the figures? Yeah, I'm going to start with, so leaving the light, we're not going to use masking fluid on this. No. So we're going to have to leave the lights behind. So this girl for instance is quite light here. So I'm going to just take a little bit now. You've got aureole in yellow in there, that's that one. It's the top of that, that's, that's that one there, yeah. Now that's a very light yellow, it's much nicer than lemon yellow. If I just touch it you'll see. Um, if I just put a little bit of this on here, now um, she wants to be about here. So you see a light lemon, it's, lemon yellow is opaque, aureole in yellow is transparent. Right. It's so much nicer. Now we're going to paint wet next to wet and wet into wet, so here I'm now going to take some of my cooler green, a little bit of the um, turquoise next to that yellow. I'm going to drop a little bit of the turquoise into the shadow into her here, just painting wet next to wet so it just flows in a bit. And that's giving me a light, cool shadow across her dress. So quite detailed at the moment, just using the effects of watercolour. Where's the turquoise here? Well, you got one. Use a cerulean otherwise, that one, that's it, yeah. That's it. Just a little bit. Okay, try and keep colours clean because you want them very light. Now against that, to make that appear cooler, I'm going to take a little bit of cobalt blue. If you watch what happens here, we've got the two cooler colours. So we've got the cool yellow here, we've got the cool um, turquoise. If I put a little bit of that warmer blue, look how it just makes... We're playing warm against cool. Just, just letting it go wet into wet. Look, just carefully, controlled accident. Not a total accident. <laughs> um, so we get the cool and the warm. They're very delicate, very light, because I want to leave that bit light. On so just this one figure? Just that one, we're just doing one at a time. We're painting by numbers See, at the minute. Are so small, uh, that they're almost... Now that quinquadrone gold I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. lovely, lovely gold. Um, right, so I'm going to now use something a bit warmer. I'm going to take some... Uh, chrome yellow, which is a much much warmer yellow. A little touch of it. Where's that? Uh, that's that's that one there. That's it. Yeah. No, that yeah. That's, well, uh, um, that's that. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Chrome yellow. There's a tiny touch on the end of your brush. No, it's very opaque, so keep it thin. Right. And we're just going to touch the hair here and the whole of his face here, right through the whole thing there down into his body. Very small, and while I've got it on my brush, like I said, when I've got a colour on my brush, I tend to use it elsewhere. The only thing it is with watercolour that we're timing it, so you know we don't want to put it on if we're not going to drop wet into wet or something. If you want it wet into wet, we've got to do it whilst it's still wet, obviously. So I've just painted the whole of that figure and the top of her head there, a little bit down the side, and I'm going to take a wee bit of rose, and while it's still wet, carefully now. I'm just going to drop a little bit of that warm colour back into the face here, down the front there, down the hair, just to catch the sunlight across there, so bit by bit. Now that rose, um, a little bit stronger now, uh, down here, so you see the difference now, look, let's have that bleed in there, look, the weight's going downwards. So we've got a little bit of bright red rose just coming in, so we've got the softer colour going into the yellow, wet into wet, and then we made it a bit stronger just there, and while I've got that on my brush I'm just going to touch it down here. It's be a little bit wetter, so I'm going to just wet my brush a bit and just dampen that in down here, so I'm going to wet my brush and just soften it in. Now purple, brushing ahead here, but we've got to do things while they're still wet, you see. So now I want the opposites to yellow is purple. I'm going to put a bit of this darker purple just around the feet here and then the purple into the shadows. So we're playing a purple shadow on the figures. Back of the head here. Quite detailed at the moment. Just painting his hair in. and we can almost dot the I's and cross the T's. It's almost as detailed as that. <coughs> Down through into the darker bit here if it's... So we're now picking out from light to dark with watercolour, remember. And we've got her, the little figures almost finished there. Right. To finish that off, I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue. So I've used my purple, now I go to the ultramarine blue. 
which is obviously it's much cooler. We've used a slightly lighter blue. And I'm going to just put in a few of the deeper shadows here into the arm, into the face, just a bit darker mm -hmm. around him here, just down into those shadows there, around here. And that little figures, those little figures are there in the sunlight. We painted them as detailed as we really need to do. So now all those colours working together. So we've got the turquoise blue against the sap green. Right, right. if you're ready then, we're going to move on. <laughs> now, because we're painting light colours first, we can't mix white with it. If we want this pinky colour here, we've got to start with a lighter colour. So I'm going to use some <coughs> cobalt violet there, which is lovely. You can't mix this violet, so some colours you've just got to have in your palette. And this area here, look, um, this whole area here is, we'll use that very light cobalt violet, first of all, to paint the whole of that area, right through up into here. I want it to be light here. While I've got that on my brush, that's that pinky one, that's it there, yeah. It's a colour that you cannot mix, so it's very useful to have in your palette. And I'm going to have it on the woman's arm here as well while I'm at it. Because I'm painting in quite detail at the moment, right through into her face, right through here, on that little girl's arm there, down the back there, keeping this quite light right through there at the moment. I want this colour coming all the way through. So a cobalt violet coming up into here. That's right through here. Even into the woman's legs down here. Painting this in quite detail at the moment because this is our focal point. We've got all of this loose work finished. The eye is going to be drawn down to there. Now while <coughs> that's still wet, <coughs> not too wet, while it's still wet we take some of the rose and we want this arm here to be much redder, so I'm going to just drop a bit of that rose in there. Look how bright that is and looking colourful. Now remember with watercolour, it dries twice as light as when you put it on, so you want to make it approximately twice as dark to start with, because it's going to disappear, it's going to go back. So I want her quite light there in the sunlight. I'm just using the rose into the cobalt violet and do the same with the woman's arm while it's still wet. We're doing this wet into wet while it's still wet. Same on this girl's face here, same on that woman's face there. Going to make it a bit stronger, building it up gradually down. I'm going to take some of my cobalt again, cobalt blue, and let that come into the shadows of this girl here. All the way, just letting it come down into that cobalt violet I painted earlier, just tickling it in, letting it mix on the paper. Her hair, woman's hair is blue here in the shadow. So you don't paint grey with black and white or use Payne's grey and things like that. We're going to use definite colours and the whole of her dress in the same blue. While I'm at it, I've got the colour on my brush. The master class again, here we go, you see. <laughs> Let's see if you can keep up with it. Right through, down. Comes all the way down here. We're going to put darker across that in a moment. Come down into her legs a little bit there as well. It's quite dark. A little bit more of the ultramarine blue now, a little bit stronger. While I'm doing these figures, I'm going to come down to that girl now, right down to her. Darker <coughs> greens down here, yeah, put darker into that in just a moment. Using ultramarine blue there now, and bring that ultramarine blue down into these areas here. So we're we'll bringing this woman out a little bit deeper blue now into her here. Now I'm going to go across to my indigo, which is my deepest so blacker blue if you like, it's um, the darkest blue we're going to be using and while this is still wet, remember it's dropping downwards because the paintings are vertical I'm going to paint this dress in dark against the light here so we're playing warm against cool rough against smooth, light against dark in our paintings right round her arm, letting that dark just work in That leg there is quite dark, so a couple of flicks, but we start to get a little bit more slick now. Just a couple of flicks for the for the for the legs. 
don't start painting it too detailed. We've been pretty detailed as it is. She wants to be darker down here, so using that indigo, the whole of this bit here, quite dark down there, just flip down, a little bit of dry brush work there then. Her head's dark, so while I've got that colour on my brush, I'm going to paint the dark of her hair in. This paint over here now is dry, so I can paint wet against dry or wet on dry, which is giving me a sharper edge in between. We've got that little group of figures that are in quite, quite detail. I can go a bit darker still, so I'm going to now take my last coat, if you like, a little bit of burnt sienna and add the burnt sienna to the um, blue that I just had, the indigo, and just finish off with a little bit of the very dark into here. I'm just catching the light. We're going to go back and um, do a little bit more in the face of the woman here because she wants to be a little bit darker in tone yet. Her hair is darker. The guy's hair here is darker on the back. We just bring him out. That girl's hair as well. Little bits of detail. Light against dark. The stronger the light, the stronger the difference between light and darks. If you've got a very dull day, the tones are much, much closer. But we've got a strong light like this. These tones are quite strong in difference between them. And there's our little group of figures in sunlight, almost there. So we'll take a bit more of the burnt sienna. And just thinly, I want to darken her face down a bit outside. This woman especially, her whole face is much darker. And the arm. So we've got our little group of light figures. Then we move across to these two figures where the tones are slightly darker, although I shall make him slightly lighter on that top just to catch the light coming through. Now to these figures now I'm going to take another cobalt. Um, so I'm going to take some cerulean again. Or in my case um, I'm going to use some turquoise here and just paint that light down through here. Right down there. On the other side of his arm is the coat, is the cobalt, which is very different. Just down to his arm there. Then I'm going to come with that cobalt down to his jeans. And I'm going to make this very simple, this bit of painting. Now I'm going to flick his leg in, so just a couple of strokes like that. One, two, quick as that. Keep them loose, a little bit of light paper showing through. While I've got that on my brush, I'll do the same with the guy next to him. Come across here and a little bit stronger with the with the blue. Just a couple of flicks to get his legs in. So one, two. We've got two legs as quick as that. Don't overdo it. Gotta work some blue through there. I'm gonna take some of the rose again and drop in the rose all the way down. That figure because I'm going to drop some warmer colour in a minute. There's no reason we can't use lots of colour and watercolour. No reason we have to be limited palette. Can be, but we don't have to be. Right through down to there. Bit of warmth into there. Bit of warmth into his jeans. Just dropping it in here and there. Look. Keep your brush marks simple. Keep it. Keep it going nice and simply. Uh, while I've got that on my brush, right the way through his head and through his face here, we've got that warmer colour. Now I'm going to go down to my mixture, the dark mixture again, while it's still wet, just paint some of these darks in, just indicate them, top of his head here, back of his head here, and see how quickly those figures form. Right across here, all the way down through, down to the jeans, and back of his leg, just catching the light. And there's our figures. Quick as that, just a few brush marks. Keep it simple. Right, so that's part of our salient points. Now we'll come up to this lamp here. 
and the lamp itself can be left light. But what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of the Oriolin yellow there, just to lighten it up a bit, on one edge especially like that. And I'm going to use a bit of that quinquadrome gold at top here. You see that sort of rather rusty yellow colour which is quite fun. And into that I'm going to drop a little bit of burnt sienna to make it a bit warmer. Just let that happen there as a detail. Simple as that. So we're painting salient points at the moment. Points that we just want a little to catch the eye with our focal area here and so on. Now a lot of this is to do with timing, especially when we really get going in a minute with the with the main background. We're going to, we are painting an impressionist painting, even though we're starting fairly um, tightly. We are going to be painting a, a fairly impressionist painting. And while that's drying, I'm just going to take a little bit of dark here and just paint in already, because we can paint over this with the with the washes we're going to do. I'm going to paint in this, this little line of the bar that's holding up. So I'm going to use some cerulean blue now and drop in where the shadow is down here, right down to there, where that cool is, right through here. Now don't worry if you need a little bit of white here and there. If you've got a, you know, uh, I know you're not using a not uh, a rough paper, but which I am, but that, isn't, that isn't a worry at the moment. So cerulean blue, right through the sky, nice big wash. Leave a little bit of sparkle of the paper if you want, right down through here. All the way down, even even on the windows a bit here. We're going to, I think, I'm going to play straight away with the cools there. To down those bits of window, straight away where the blue shutters are here. These light shutters. Just keep it simple. Keep your brush marks very simple. I'm leaving a little bit of light paper showing through. I don't want to make it totally dark. Just single brush strokes, you're simplifying, stylizing everything really. Now while it's still wet, we're going to keep this going while it's still wet, all the way down, all the way down through here. The whole of this is going to be wet now. We're going to, we're going to do this while it's still wet. So you don't worry about leaving a bit of sparkling with paper if it does show, don't worry about that. Right the way down. If it's a bit stronger somewhere, then you can make it stronger somewhere. So I'll put a little bit of extra blue just here because it's a bit stronger in those shadows there. It's a very rapid way to work. I've done this actually painting out in Portugal and places that I like this. It's an absolutely gorgeous way to do it. So if it's bluer somewhere you make it a bit bluer. If it's not you make it a bit thinner. Watch your flowers here. We're going to leave those flowers as, as um, without so much blue in. And that blue comes all the way through down here. The shadows here. You've noticed I've already signed my painting because I used a China Graph pencil, which means that I, just under, I can uh, paint straight over it. It won't move, which is quite fun. Right, so painting that in just lovely and loose, a little bit of sparkle paper coming through, right the way down here. Thin coat of cerulean. We've already got an effect of light. Now back in there, I tend to take a little bit of my cadmium red. There are so many permutations. There's no one right way. I'm going to just drop that in this bit here, just, just tickle it on. Now these chimneys are here. Of course it doesn't come down too far, it doesn't really matter if it does, because because we're working on the vertical. Now back to my ultramarine blue. We've already wet the paint so they're ready to go. And drop in the ultramarine here, straight downwards. Press through there and down, leaving the lighter blue there now showing out. Right through here, a little bit of marine down there as well. And that's coming all the way down there into this cerulean blue. Put the blue behind there, so it's wet into wet to get the atmosphere. We'll drop a bit more into that in a moment, down here. Now, plenty of it. Start coming in here now. So 
So watch where these stronger blues are now. We can start to just drop some of those in. Just feeling away with the brush, just tickling with the brush. So mine is already dry. Oh, you've got to get in there while it's uh, make it plenty of wet. And if, it, if it's gone dry, now use, it, you use your brush, just wet your brush and just wet the edges a bit. Just tickle it on, let it drop down. It's a feeling with this watercolour. Yeah, it's, um, it is, yeah. you know, it's something I, I can teach you by showing you to a degree. But really, I'm going to use these brushes. We can use it. We could use a flat brush for this if we wanted to get the end right. But I'm just going to use these brushes just to get a feeling of this coming down here. So quite loosely, you could, if you prefer, you can use one of your little flats to get this more in more detail. I want to keep this nice and loose. Now I've got to do this while it's still wet. So on we go again. Now I'm going to go back up to here and just, while it's drying off, just go in a bit stronger there with the texturing. Just get the feeling of these tiles up here, behind. Mine's all, it's dry already. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to dry fairly quickly, but you've got, you've got to work very, very fast. Now, we're going to, go, going to go on to a different colour, we're going to go on to the yellow ochre. And I'm going to drop some, quite a strong coat of yellow ochre in here. All the way across again, right the way down and through. Across this blue, all these lovely warms coming in here. We've got the blue showing through. Right down through here, wherever it is, through there. Now this is going to allow us to paint wet into wet again, you see. We're going to go right down. So we've got the blue just glowing through, but if we can let that come into the wet paint, so it's slightly wetter there, you can just see I'm using this, and it is timing, it is, it is difficult. You've got to know with watercolour just, just how yeah. wet something is going to be. And no way, and I'm leaving a bit of the scenic, see I'm using the rough paper now here to get the effect of the stonework a bit, which you haven't got, but that's not, not to worry. You would be better off with that paper than you would have been with other stuff because other stuff was even smoother, wasn't it? Was, was, it was, it was yeah. hot press. So right the way down, leaving little bits of light showing through to give the illusion of the um, configurations on the wall. That's right. So thinner coats here, letting the white glow through. We're catching the light. We build up. We've got to do this while it's still wet, which is why I couldn't stop. Um, now around these figures here, doesn't matter if you go slightly over the figures even. Just letting the light show there. Plenty of light, plenty of white paper left. Right down around here. Get strong as it comes down around here. Quite thin washes. Just dragging the brush over. We don't even need the square brushes for this. We'll see. I mean, I use my um, my mop here to do those shutters at the moment, but we might come back onto that. So there we've got the, the light behind already, bringing that across these blues, the warm into the blues here. Don't, don't be afraid to drag it downwards, it's like feeling of a, of a wet uh, street. Loads and loads of, of nice wet. Now get darker, now I've got these flowers down here and at this stage I want to put in some colour for these flowers. I'm going to use a little bit of the cobalt violet again that we used earlier. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's, it's, you can teach almost any um, technique of painting stage by stage, almost for chimps, you know? Yeah. But you can't with watercolour. You can show somebody, but then they've got to do it to get the feel of it. Yeah. And it might be you've got to do half a dozen of these. And sometimes even I need to, well even I, but sometimes I need to loosen up um, and do a couple of watercolours before I go into doing the watercolour, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I haven't um, done watercolours for a long time. Because, well, that's what you've got to be loose for it. Now I'm going to take that cobalt violet while it's going and just drop it in to other places here. It's a lovely colour while I see it on my in, in my painting. I'll just drop it in all over where, where it can be here to get these violets and purple which now links with that figure over there. Now I've got to go a stage darker. So the next thing now is to come up and make a mixture of the um, yellow ochre and a bit of burnt sienna. And we're going to go warmer. Get some of our warmer colours in. And some of that warmer colour is down here. So I'm going to put, some, put in that door straight away. 
and down behind them here. See I'm doing almost everything in single strokes, virtually just straight in, you've got to be very bold and brave, make your colour, put it down, leave it alone. There's nothing worse than people who play with it too much afterwards. You've got to do it and leave it alone. Put it on and leave it alone, nice and fresh. We can drop into that in a moment. Here, I want to move this warm up into here. Just picking out some of the details, a little bit more now here, and up into the shadows here, pick out those details just a bit more. And um, coming down here, much, much warmer now. Some of these windows, we can start to show them. With the open, for instance. Now I've got to go darker here still. So I'm going to take more of the burnt sienna. And now I'm going to start to add my ultramarine to it. So I'm really going to go quite dark now and warm. Find these windows, start to find these windows here. We're building up our watercolour now, building up these tones that are darker and darker. They're really going to give us some life. Letting the wet flow one into another, and it's all controlled accident. put more cooling when I want to this way. We can start to leave the lights behind if you've got a serration there for instance. Right down dark down there down to this step here it's dark behind here. A slight bit of light blue left behind there and start to indicate these bits of the building now. You see what I'm trying to do, don't you? Even yeah, if, yeah, if you, if you yeah, struggle yeah. doing it, it's just good to try it. No, no. That's right. And if you see it being mm. done and you're trying next to it, well, it'll come. It's just, you keep at it. So we're playing light against dark. So we're going to play this lovely, strong shadow of this wall against the darks. While that's still a bit wet, we'll drop in some more shadow across here. And really pick out the light of those figures in the background there. And it really does get quite dark under here amongst these flowers. Now we can go a bit darker and start to drop in, gradually building up bit by bit. All this dark here, a bit more blue in there perhaps to make it cooler. There's a shadow coming out from these people here. Behind here. And when I put it on my brush we'll start to indicate that. But keep it going whilst it's still wet, that's the point, because if it goes dry, you've yeah, got problems. Not already a problem. And I'm having the same here, we've got to just keep going at it. You can, you can wet the paper again and come back. <coughs> this isn't a... But we've got to keep at it. Let's work there, I'll just work that in. It's all going to be soft edges merging one into another gradually here. And building it up and up and up more and more and more with the burnt sienna and the oxmarine. Getting stronger and stronger. So I flattened my brush there, dry brush, just to pick up 
tiles. Again, same thing down here. Just indicate that. Find these nice medieval beams. Get some lovely colour effects. To be a bit bluer there, so I'm going to take my ultra green blue and just give that a second wash. Same down here, a little bit darker just there. A bit more blue down there. Indicating everything in gradually. Right down through into here. I'm going to go darker still. So more ultramarine. It won't be long before I now go to using a much deeper um, the, the Prussian blue or the indigo. Not long now. And we just drop in. And of course the thicker we make the paint now we've, we've, you've used the paint very light, but now I'm just starting to use it um, with more pigment in. So I'm using a lot more pigment in my um, in my brushwork. Less water, in other words. Even though it's wet into wet, that's doing enough for me. Down and through here, very dark, just down there. I'm going to go very dark in just a moment. Really let these lights come out now. Strong darks against light. We can just start to indicate in the stronger shadows now. Again, we can use a smaller brush for this if we want to pick salient points, but a bit more warmth in that shadow there. Same here. Get that shadow a bit stronger. So we want to show sunlight, we need to put very strong lights and darks. And we can get away with quite a big brush, you can see, for quite a while before having to use a smaller one. Right, now I'm going to go to the stronger colours I was talking about. I'm going to start using some indigo and my burnt sienna and really drop in some darks, really go very very much stronger now. Just indicating these details of the stonework here. Windows and pots and whatever that are hanging around. Leave those behind by painting around them look. So quite heavy paint now as well, quite a lot of pigment in my brushwork. Right down. To here. Playing more brown or more blue as I wish as I do these darks. Just indicating things that are going along the stonework there. And let the viewer do the work. We don't want to have the viewer being lazy. We're going to make them do some work for themselves and look at this painting of ours. So you see how I'm using the controlled accident here now of, of just letting these colours come one into another down here and playing the different warms with the blues to really get these strong shadows 
coming through. We're going to put final details on in a moment, we don't have to do them yet. Back up into here again, and I'm going to use this very strong colour up here. Another glazing into there, and just dropping into those darks. To really get the feeling of that strong sunlight. Same here, little bits strong shadow against the light. Textures here of the plant. I'm going to put a little bit of green into there in just a moment. I can still drop in dark into dark. Constantly I can keep working on this. As it dries, the areas are softening, but also as it dries, they're going to gradually get harder edged. So the more of this detail I do, the more of the detail is actually going to show after a while, which is now just starting to give me an impression of the wall being here. Last scene is, you know, if we were there sketching, we'd, we'd have this just about finished already. We wouldn't need to do too much more. If I wanted a wet day, I could start dragging colour through here. We'll, do, we'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, what I want to do now is um, start to pick out some of the details. So I'm going to come back to this rose again here. And just drop in while it's still wet. Just drop a bit more of this rose back into here. Wet into wet, just to strengthen that. Bit of flower up there, letting it come into the wet into wet paint I got earlier, just to really give that effect. And up here we've got a bit of that rose coming into the background. Pick it up. And a little bit of purple as well. So I'm going to take some of my purple, especially down here, to get the cool of the flower here. How that purple draws that forward. There's no one answer, you know. We, we, we explore the each painting by its own merits as we go along here. <coughs> That's a nice, lively work in itself already. So, details. This is now where I start to come back into the details. Now I'm going to take a little flat brush and just look at these shutters. So some of the mix I made earlier with the dark. And let's just see if we can start to flick in some of these shutters. So this is the Prussian blue or indigo if you like. Quite strong now. We're using very dark against what I said earlier in the introduction to this film about using a round brush for round objects and a square brush for square objects makes sense. Keep your lines going in perspective, but they don't have to be exact. Make sure your perspective continues on this. So wherever there's a, a straight edge now, I can just pop it in with my Wii. can do any dry brush work like this look. You see how the, the stiffer brushes allow me to do a little bit of dry brush here and there. Just using the paint a little bit more heavily I can just 
Check in some of the grasses and textures coming down here. With a little bit of sap green. Just to drop a bit of green into here. And it'll play against those reds, remembering that green is the opposite in the colour circle. And I'm using it quite thickly because I'm painting into quite strong paint here. But I'm just going to indicate that we've got plants and things happening. Now, I use my small flat just now for doing these, but I'm going to need a smaller one still, it seems. So, if you haven't got a flat that'll do the job, if it's that small, I mean it's just in between, then you just go back to your round again, and you can flick these things in with the round instead. So we've worked tight to loose and now we've gone back again and we're working loose to tight. So I'm gradually tightening up now. Let's say we've got these strong darks against lights because of the strong sunlight with the effect we want to get. And you can see how having done the details earlier it's allowed me just to paint loosely around those and not have to put them all in now. And finally, come back to our shadows. Now I can do much more detail. Let's work around this archway here a bit more carefully. Salient points, as I was saying earlier. And feel the shadow coming down into there. Bit of dry brush work just down there. Bit of shadow happening. Because it's a very hard thing to do. It looks easy. Mm. But it's um, not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> no. But it's lovely. I love the watercolours. Yeah. It's right. just well, all of these ways of working looser. What are we going to do next time? So we've, done, we've done the acrylic inks and pastel loose. We've done the acrylics loose with the uh, rollers. Um, but you have to next think, what do you want to do? What's the next project demo while we're doing this series? don't know. Let's have a yeah. think. This is where we can start to play with sharper edges if we want them anyway. But the thing now is not to go too far. We've got it loose. We want to keep it. <laughs> now for me as a loose watercolour I'm about I'm about done I think. Um, I'm just going to add just a couple more strokes with my flat of um, some warms. Just take a little bit of the yellow. We're going to touch of 
um, a touch of cadmium orange in fact. Just a little bit of cadmium orange just to go into these areas here a bit, a bit messy but cadmium orange, cadmium yellow just, just to brighten up some of these shadows coming up through here. So a cadmium yellow, a little bit of cadmium orange just into some of these shadows in the in the wall over here. And for me, I wouldn't do much more on that. And you've done very well over there too, actually. That's not bad. No, there's some nice, there's some lovely terrible. things, there's some lovely things happening in there. Don't be so bashful. Just going to add one or two little bits more of the the deep blue in the shadows here and there. That's all. And there we are. I think we'll call that one done.